everybody. How are you? <laughs> Jamie, what's up? Eric throws his ear out, like, waiting for the bloggers and readers and viewers to say hello. He oh. says, hi. I'm sure everybody's saying hi to you, Eric. <laughs> huh? Say hi back. Hello. Oh, yeah, you did. All right, we are going to talk about something that a lot of uh, the YouTube subscribers have asked about, and that is, Eric, about good and evil and hell and all that nastiness. Tell us, is there a hell, as the Bible says? He goes, wait, wait, let me grab my soapbox. Go, get it. <laughs> God knows on. you could use a few more inches. Oh, my gosh. I'll look like a tiny person next to him. Oh. Yes. Let's talk about that. Is there a hell? Nope. He goes, the oh. end. <laughs> yeah. Ding. <laughs> he goes, You're talking about a hell as defined as being in charge of someone like the devil, right? Right. 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 That's your definition that you're giving here. Uh huh. Fire, brimstone. Yeah. Because you go there because you're being punished for something else that you did. That kind of a thing? Okay, right. Right? No. No. Doesn't exist. It's a good story, though. And it's a good story that fits the, the human linear thinking. That something can only be one thing at a time. That you can only be in heaven, or you can only be in hell. Mm. He said it also fits our understanding of how to be a better person. Because that, that's a big thing for people, mm -hmm. how to be a better person, which already means that you're judging it, that you can be better than what you were before, that you weren't accepting of what you were doing before and whatever you were doing before was wrong. See so over there. So you're saying that um, by people believing in hell, they'll be better people? Is that what you're saying? That there's a, there's yes. a good reason to believe in hell? Yes, that... It fits our, our linear thinking on earth, and it gives it structure. So it, it, it ties all up in our language and belief systems, but in where we're going, it's not going to fit. Well, where did the idea of, idea of hell come from, anyway? He said, what religion or history slice of culture do you want to look into? Everybody has their own version of it. Mostly it is always defined as being shunned or not accepted by the God or gods. Okay. That's where it came from. Mm -hmm. It was the explanation, the location and the place of why you weren't accepted. Uh, I see. Okay. Right, because not only... <laughs> I see what you're saying. <laughs> Hold on. Not only are your actions and your thoughts and your words defining what you're doing, but little did you know that the God or gods that are around you can make you do these things. Ooh. He says it very sarcastically. No, of course. Right. He doesn't mean it as, as real, but he said in in times of old, it helped us explain, like if you were going crazy in your head, we didn't have mental disease, but we could say, well, you know, the devil, the one who is most ungodlike must have mm. been around you at that time and caused that because it certainly wasn't your fault or something in your human makeup that didn't allow you to be kind or whatever action was acceptable at that moment okay all right so those are the two reasons that they pop up well so why was there, was there any nefarious reason that mankind created this concept of hell or did they just really believe it or did they say oh let's get together and let's let's scare people and so that we could control them and all that that's certainly not like that is it no it was used first to describe not being accepted by mm -hmm. god so that we could have a definition of that. And then also to describe some human actions that couldn't be understood by any other, <clears throat> you know, any other means at that time. But then because it was already in the language yeah. that when government started to form and really take shape, they could use it to their benefit and mm. basically claim, you know, if you don't 
tithe, if you don't behave like this, if you don't show this kind of loyalty, then you're going to be banned to hell. You're going to be shunned. I was always afraid of that. I was raised Catholic until I was like five years old. And my parents didn't want to go to church anymore, even though my great uncle was Cardinal of Spain, or was. And, um, and so uh, they, my parents took us, all of us little girls, my four sisters, actually three at the time, into separate rooms and, and said, you know, and interviewed us to see if we wanted to go to, to um, church. So my dad took me and said, Elisa, you want to go to church? And I said, well, I don't want to go to hell. And he says, there's no such thing as hell. Jackie, she don't want to go. So that was the end of my church experience. <laughs> well, he loves that. Is there, um, and I remember a long time ago you were talking about hell as far as how it can't, it can't really exist anyway, right? Because there's, that would imply a separation and everything is God. And can you go through that again? Yes, the definition of hell is the true absence of God or God's source, but God is omnipresent, omni-being. It's all the omni. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. She's everywhere. Energy is everywhere. So you can't pull away from it. So you can't so, have this separate hell. Right. Okay. No go. Because the closest I could describe is... Um, being on earth, being in a human body, because the instruments that we have and how we choose to come into these bodies and surrender, kind of give up everything that we've known before this, assuming that you want to talk like time is linear, mm -hmm. that we come into these bodies lacking information. So this is the closest to what people describe hell as being that we can achieve. Okay. Hell is on earth. Well, um, we can make our own hell, right? If you believe in hell, when you first pass over, you create yeah, you this can... this idea of hell, but it's not really hell. So what's the difference there? It's an illusion instead of a reality? Yes, it's a creation instead of reality. Okay, does a brimstone really burn in the fire? If you believe it really burns, That's then horrible. I guess so. You get stuck, stuck there forever if you truly believe there's a hell? Well, why is that horrible? That's obviously what the person wanted to design for themselves. Ugh. Why are you judging it, Mama? I don't know. Maybe they they didn't they they designed it for themselves, but didn't really want to. Well, as soon as they don't really want to, they start having those thoughts. And yeah. As soon as they have those thoughts, then other options are provided for them. Even if they didn't know how to create the other options, if they're creating the space for something else to arrive, mm -hmm. then the time of their hell and fire and brimstone is over. So one little pinky toe in that fire, and I, that's enough, man. There is no hell, right? Get me out of here. That's what I would do. All right, so what about a, the devil? Is, that, is there such a thing as the devil? <laughs> like the red horned lizard yeah, looking dude? Yeah, <laughs> you know, the Halloween costume type. Pitchforks. No. no. So no types of devils. What about Lucifer? Does he, did he exist? Does he exist? Lucifer is an entity, yes. Oh, tell me about him. While I sip my coffee. You were so funny, Eric. He calls him Luke. Luke, yeah, just like your brother Luke. But no relation, people. Yeah. No, no relation <laughs> to Lucifer. He might act like that sometime, but... <laughs> he says the, the definition, the explanation, what what Lucifer turned into through storytelling and everything is far removed than what, than what he really is. So when he said the word he, he kind of showed me that um, Luke kind of possesses the masculine and feminine energy, so it's not really just a he kind okay. of an energy. Just heads up. But, um, it's a she devil too, huh? A he devil and a she devil. Is it basically it just means that someone who speaks against what is is being presented, and it's a great human quality. It doesn't reside well in the energetic world and energetic quality. What? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? 
Well, he's his mom. If you think about all the conversations that we've had, like anger, hatred, things of that nature, jealousy, the lower vibrational emotions mm-hmm. don't really work where I am now. Oh, well, that's And higher true. dimensional planes, they don't vibrate as strong. It's really okay. hard to hold on to them. It's hard to be in that space. But that's kind of what... It's so funny that he calls him Luke. Mm-hmm. But that's what Luke holds on to. Okay. Kind of the the denser energetic qualities and and they're really special for humans i don't know why people take such joy in a a demonizing demonizing again not that word begins with an i i Um, don't know it's probably not my vocabulary plus it's an eric it's probably a made-up word then (laughs) yeah eric quit making up words but people blow the story out of proportion because they have God, yeah, who is so great and okay and the best of the best that there has to be somebody who carries the title of the worst of the worst. Yeah, he says that's just bullshit, people. Okay. All right. So, did uh, Lucifer really uh, fall from heaven? Did God banish him? I mean, no. All right. So, Lucifer is just basically an entity that represents the lower density human qualities yes and the fall guy for all the bad shit that happens oh poor guy oh i guess he That's signed okay, up for it though he knows better so don't worry oh yeah it's really all right uh but he's not a bad is he or is he is he, he would you consider him evil i consider him being able to handle evil but I don't consider him to be evil. What do you mean, handle evil? So we have entities that are from other dimensional planes that do their best to reside on human earth plane. Okay. He says a lot of people use the word as demons, Shadows, negative I was energies. Ask, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Possessions, hauntings, crap like that. Ooh. Those spirits that do fucked up shit to interfere with human life and take joy in it. That's mm-hmm. what I call evil. Okay. So Luke is a dude that can handle this kind of stuff, but not work on that side. Well, what do you mean handle? How does he handle it? He banishes them? He stops them from being evil? I mean... Dude, Mom, there's no yes. banishing. I mean, well, I'm just trying to give you a multiple choice here, but you can uh, do other, none of the above. <laughs> Go ahead. He says, well, it's hard because when we're talking about these different variations of experiences, we want to categorize them as being, you know, good to gray to bad when they're all valuable. Mm-hmm. But just because there's qualities we consider bad doesn't mean that they get punished or banned from them. That's that's total human concept. Yeah. This, um, so Luke is an angel identity that's able to work in low, low vibration qualities to help bridge, amend, create options, but there's no banishing or telling someone how it's going to go and how it's going to be. That's human shit. So, so there is evil then. How can there be evil when all there is is God and light? Because God is composed of light and dark. Okay. Complete darkness or is there always light? Now, you've described this before. and Maybe you could do it again. How everything is a spectrum and that evil is just the lower end of the light. Can you tell me more about that? He goes, oh, you did a really good job right there. It paints a great visual, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's came from you. There's so many shades beneath red that we don't see. Wow, and there's yeah. so many shades of color above violet that mm. we don't see. But when you die, you get to see it. Oh. You can go ahead and get excited about that right now. Go ahead. Yay! <laughs> colors! Colors! Happy, happy now? Yes. And along with the colors come a certain vibrant vibrational energy 
and they come with emotions that you don't experience in this human body. So it's it's really a whole new world. Okay. God is composed of all of that. And he goes, I'm just using the word God because there's just no... Yeah, it's easy. It's only three letters. Easy to pronounce. We know what you mean. Source energy, the collective consciousness, all, all energy that is, is all yeah, that is, God. blah, 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 blah. All of that. Yeah, blah, and blah. It, God is blah, is, blah, blah. It's everything. You yeah. can't separate it. If you separate it, then the definition of all that is is inaccurate. Yeah. It's just... It can't be all people... that is except aspects. Yes. <laughs> except this part over here that we're going to call evil. Right? Yeah. Wow, so it's evil not... is part of God. That is just so yes. weird. Wow. Why? Hope... Because you don't know how to love it? Because you don't like it? No, I don't like evil. Why should I? Now, if, if, I hope that shoulders. part of God uh, that is the evil does not smite me right now. But no, I don't like that part of God. Who would? No. Mom, there's no hunting down and and attacking you no, because I know. of your specific belief he says i know he's laughing what okay. next i don't think we finished that one i don't like evil why should i like evil you don't have to like it but you don't have to not like it okay well what's to like about it maybe i can rephrase it let's say that because from lower vibration qualities comes a new perspective on other vibrational qualities. Go on. A lot of times in the human experience, if you have a struggle, mm -hmm. when you get through the struggle, you cherish or value the results from the struggle in a different way than if it was just handed to you. It's okay. all about creating experience. We come to earth to have experience. And if it's all just good shit and good vibrations, you're not going to get much of a variety of an experience, are you? So you okay. might as well just be dead to begin with. It's like you have to know experience hot to understand cold. Yes, that's right. So you have to under, uh, experience betrayal sometimes to understand that facet of love called forgiveness. Right. And because we have these extremes in the vibrational pattern, many people say, oh, I really like this and I really don't like that. Therefore, all that I like is totally acceptable and all that I don't like is completely unacceptable. And all of a sudden it's labeled bad mm -hmm. and this is labeled good. Yeah. Okay. Because it's just perspective. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to say about hell, the devil, good, evil? And then we'll go on in, in the next session. We're going to talk about possessions and demons and sh shadows and negative energies and all that kind of stuff. But, but anything else you want to say to wrap it up? No. Baby boy? Is, let's talk about that other stuff. All right. Well, we'll close off here. And um, Jamie, thank you so much for this. Eric, hey, I'll talk to, you, talk to you a little bit about this other stuff. You guys, um, I, I'll put uh, Jamie's site on the um, uh, on the movie, so I've, I've been doing that, so it helps. Nice. And it's just you need to go there, subscribe to her newsletter, keep up with her because she is just going a mile a minute. And <laughs> uh, and I'll put the Channeling Eric uh, website uh, web address there too, so you guys go to the blog, like and subscribe. I'll give you all the reminders. Also, uh -huh. start at the beginning. In case you don't know, I put an excerpt, uh, two excerpts from Eric's new book in the description box if you want to read that. So, oh, that's great. So go for that. And uh, also, I want to let you know that I'm open to any kind of questions or topics you want to me to put on my list. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, Eric. Bye, Bye Jamie. Bye, everybody.